course data visualization with python my name is pranjit shrivastu and i will be your course instructor in this learning course you will be learning various charts and graphs to transform your complicated data sets into beautiful charts and graphs and then to extract meaningful insights and then to take critical business decisions in this course you will be learning lots of chart and how to create them like bar charts then different types of line charts then time series charts with stock price market stimulator here i'm going to create the dummy data sets for stock market and we're going to do analysis on it then we're going to learn to create the scatter chart where the data points will be scattered all around the graphs and we're going to show the relationship and the correlation between two variables then after it we're going to add the third dimension to our scatter plot like adding the size of our dot to make the different size of bubbles which you can name it as a bubble chart and this chart has uh, other very very useful things which we're going to discuss in this learning course then we're going to focus on to create the pie charts the donor charts and show the different part to whole relationship okay and this is how the plotly really does the thing it is it makes the chart too much interactive that you can interact with each and other variables and different categories and to derive meaningful insights this is sunburst chart to represent your hierarchical data sets okay once you f you have the hierarchical data set you can use the sunburst chart and then explore the beauty of your data explore the categories and the inner circles game so here in this course you will going to learn a lot of things different kinds of charts and graphs and we're going to deliver a story and story is a very very important part in data visualization so i'm super excited to have you on board see you in the clip. hey friend welcome back in this lesson i'm going to tell you that what are the packages and libraries which will require throughout the plotly series this is my environment named DataViz where I've already installed all the libraries and packages related to data science, machine learning and of course data visualization. Okay, so first of all what I'm going to do here is to open the Jupyter Notebook. And to open the Jupyter Notebook you can just simply write Jupyter space notebook. And it will going to create a server for Jupyter and where you can easily create the Jupyter Notebook. Either you can use Google Colab or any other things, but I prefer generally this Jupyter Notebook. Okay, now here I'm going to import some of the libraries and to show the version which I'm using right now, 5.1.0, which is the latest one, while at the time I'm recording this course. And I'm going to now show you that how you can simply create the basic charts with the help of this plotly. This is how you can use iplot to plot your line chart and simply remove the i from your iplot it will going to open the new tab okay from where you can download that particular chart zoom in zoom out and then you, you have the option for pan then there's option for auto scale as well and lots of other options are available with this plotly it makes your chart more interactive than any other data visualization libraries and packages like matplotlib, ggplot, bouquet or any other. It makes a little bit more interactive. That's why I prefer using this plotly. Okay. Now the next thing which you have to do is the very very necessary step that how you can create the environment and how you can install the libraries and the packages. Meanwhile I'm going to show you a uh, chart how to create a simple line chart i'm going to extract it that particular uh, quote snippet from the official plotly website to show you that how it will going to work to create a simple line chart with the help of plotly express okay so why i did all these things the the thing is i'm just showing that all the setups which i have right now will going to produce a beautiful chart and plotly is working fine okay don't worry i'm going to use my own data sets and this is for only demo purpose that's why i just use the official website data set and the their code snippets okay 
so this is anaconda navigator and here you will get lots of lot uh, packages and for my database as i said you i have already installed various libraries and packages related to machine learning data science and so on things okay so that's why we have lots of things here so for you you must have plotly you must have dash the pandas and as well as the numpy these are some of the packages you, which you must have inside your environment so either you can use google collab or jupyter but you need to have these packages for now keep learning keep exploring hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i've shown you that how you can create the simple line chart now in this part i'm going to create another line chart but with different data set this time i'm going to use stock market data sets okay so here i'm going to create my dummy data sets for stock market as well for it um, the first thing which i will require here is the stock price the random stock price and that random stock price will be like um, 40 then sometimes uh, 20 then sometimes increasing and sometimes decreasing okay that's how the stock market work that there will be company there will be ups and downs over the time okay so here i will going to generate a uh, random stock prices and then i'm going to um, create a list from year 1999 to 2021 okay so this will be the whole data set for me and uh, here i'm again using this random function to generate my dummy data sets okay so here i have created the variable for change which will going to add into my prices and then i'm going to append that price into my list okay so this is the logic behind to create the dummy data sets okay isn't it easy yes it is easy so whenever you are going to read on this cell it will going to create again and again the random data okay sometimes it can give the um, negative value if you wish to add the minus 40 instead of 40 okay that's why i'm just using the 40 positive post 40 so whenever i'm going to create the um, the line chart then you will find that the stock price is just increased just like a compounder stocks okay compounder stocks are those stocks which over time increase only okay so here i'm going to just going to create a line graph for a compounder stocks okay through which over time it just increased never decreased okay so here i'm going to create a list for my ear and here i'm just doing this the only thing is to increase the number from 1992 to 2000 until it will iterate till the 22nd times okay so this is the logic behind to create a list of years now with the help of this two list i'm going to create the dictionary dictionary is like having there will be one key and for that there will be corresponding value will be there so here i in my data set you will require only two things which is stock price and the date the year so i'm going to create a what i'm going to create a dictionary and in this dictionary there will be two values and the two keys keys will be year and the stock price and the value will be the list so this is the uh, dictionary where you can give your keys and values okay as you can see the length of both the list is 22 so you can easily create the dictionary make me sure that the length of both of the list must be same okay so this is how you can create the dictionary and then dictionary is converted into the data frame okay so we have now our dummy data set our dummy data frame now i'm going to create the line chart for this data okay now you need to import this plotly library and write down the figure equal to px dot line and then you need to pass the data frame which is the input and the x and y okay so this is how you can 
easily create the line chart as as said that it it is a chart for the compounder stocks which over the time increased only okay now let me put some negative value here like minus 40 okay now rerun all the cells and let's see that what kind of charts will be going to be created and as you can see that sometimes it increased and sometimes it decreased ups and downs are there this looks like a much um, similar to any any stock price for any stock let me read in the cells again and this time okay the value is in negative so if you want that this kind of condition will never occur you need to put some if and else condition as well so that it will going to absolute this situations okay instead of minus 40 i think minus 20 will be a better option for us again read on the cells and you can see uh, a chart which don't have any negative value as well and it increased over the time but sometimes uh, there there was time when it was in the bearish mode okay so this is how you can create your dummy sets and then you can able to create the line chart and this is not only the line chart it is also you can say the time data time and data chart okay so i'm now going to create uh, another dummy data set for another company a okay and here i'm going to do the same thing but this time i'm going to replace it with the suffix of a and all the variables which i think should be changed okay so i think we have we did uh, some changes which are required to create the dummy set for company a okay so this is kind of time series chart okay where there will be some times will really there in the x-axis and in the y-axis there will be some values in our case the value of stock price over the time so this this is not only line chart you can also say it as a time series chart okay now i'm going to use the graph objects okay so so that i will be easily merge two charts in the same graph okay so you need to just import plotly.graph as go and then figure you need to initialize the instance for figure in case of graph object then you need to add traces okay and while creating the line chart using this graph object you need to use the scatter option okay scatter is like some points some data points which are scattered all around your graph that's why we name it as a scatter chart and here it will going to um, connect all the dots create all the data points to create the line chart so here i'm going to add all of those things here and create a line chart a merged line chart where there will be the stock price value for two companies one is company which i created earlier and then company a okay so this is how this whole thing work it is very easy to use plotly because you don't need to um have you don't need to write any complex code here it's just simple just like writing in leaks okay so this is the best thing which i can see here okay so the changes which I'm doing here is like stock price of company 2 will be okay rather than saying the company A okay and I don't think so that anything any changes required here okay it's like no module name plotly job oh yes the the library is the module is graph object okay now I have got another error which is stock price of company 2 okay uh, this is the column name which I supposed to have 
and and I don't think so that any kind of problem is there okay yeah okay I understand okay okay that data frame which I've used doesn't have that column it is in data frame one so this is the graph of two stock prices of different companies let me rerun the cell for company two as you can see now the charts look similar they are in upward direction but sometimes there is some fall is there and sometimes there is up is there sometimes bear pair is there sometimes there is bullish pair but most of the time it is uh, bullish in nature that's why we can call it as a compounder stock and in plotly you can select the different companies particularly okay now this is all about line chart or you can say time series chart i hope you have understand the difference between line chart and the time series chart time series chart will totally focused on like one x-axis or either y-axis but most of the times in x-axis there will be the time will be there and in the, the line chart there is no type of criteria that that particular axis will going to be the time okay you can put any variables you want to and show it on the basis of the line chart okay so in the next lesson we're going to talk more about different kind of chart which you can produce using this plotly till now keep learning keep exploring what's up guys welcome back here in this lesson i'm going to talk about scatter chart let's do it so first of all i'm going to import the panda library and then the random library as well because these are the libraries which i'm going to use here okay so here i'm going to talk about the scatter chart why do we need the scatter chart the first question which really hit in your mind like scatter chart is very useful in the field of data science as well the data analytics then your machine learning when you're going to deal with some kind of linear regressions and many other problems okay so in this scatter chart what actually happened that there will be some values in x variable then there will be some values in y variable and you're going to put down that all that data points into your graph and scatter all around the your graph that's why we call it as a scatter chart or you can scatter graph so here first of all i'm going to create my own dummy data sets with the help of this random uh, library i'm going to generate the random values and put into my data frame and then we're going to create our scatter chart okay so through which our scatter chart we can collect some relationship between two variables as well you can also collect the correlationship between the variables okay so these are the some major points which you must know while creating the scatter chart okay now here as uh, in my dummy data set i'm putting the 10 companies will be there and with their random stock price will be there then random volume will be there and then random change in the price will be there change in price simply means the price which is today and the price in the previous day and the change between them i'm going to put into my change in price so here i have the four list one is name stock price volume and the change in price and then i have created the for loop and it will iterate until and unless for 10th iterations as the length of my name list is 10 okay because we have the 10 companies and with the help of this random in function i'm going to generate the dummy values and as there is two values around my bracket this simply means the value will be between the value one and the value two okay so this is my for loop to generate the random values and create a uh, dummy data sets now i'm going to put all this um list values into my dictionary as we know that dictionary have two things one is key and one is the values so in the key key is basically the our name our stock price our change in price or and the volume will be there and in the value i'm going to put the list okay so in this way i'm actually creating the dictionary and later on i'm going to put this dictionary values into my data frame and data frame is the main thing through which we we are going to create our any other charts this is like input thing which you need to put down and then you can able to create which is a graph or chart okay so this is my data frame and i think i made some mistake here okay i forgot to replace the values okay now i'm going to read on this desk and this is the 
new data frame with the dummy values around okay so i love to play with random values because we're going to get some randoms um, chart okay so sometimes it, it will not look like it can be feasible or not but yes the, that's the beauty of using the random data okay so now the main game is to create the scatter chart here so first of all you need to import this plotly.express and then i'm going to use this figure for my variable and then px.scatter and here you need to put the data frame the x value and the y value and here i'm going to use the stock price and the change in the percentage and to show the relationship between them okay that's the main thing okay so you need to put down all your values here and later on i'm going to show you that what kind of relationship i'm extracting from this chart okay so that right y equal to the change in price change in price simply means like Today is 10 rupees earlier was 8 rupees then there is a change in 25 percent today okay that's that is a thing which which is will be there in the change in price okay this this is the my scatter chart as i said that the points will be scattered all around the my graph that's why it is called as a scatter chart you can see the price which are lower than 70 having a high change in price rather than the price above 70 having a high price but some of them are in negative so this is the relationship i'm extracting from this scatter chart actually i don't think so that this relationship will going to be take to some point but yes that's you can call it as a scatter chart and you can put into your problem statements and then derive the meaningful insights so that's all this is all about scatter chart in next video i'm going to add some more things into my scatter chart okay so for now keep learning keep exploring and keep data visualizing okay hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can build a scatter plot in few steps and here i'm going to add some more things into my scatter plot now as i have used the plotly to build my scatter plot as you can see that while hovering over my plot it's giving the information about the data points so this is the advantage of using plotly or any other data visualization libraries like macrotlib cbon ggplot and various other ones that's why i use this plotly because it makes a little bit more interactive and it is also visually appearing so that's why plotly have uh, some advantages over any other visualization libraries okay now i'm going to add some titles into my scatter plot as it is very important to add scat uh, these titles into your plot so that your audience could understand that what kind of data you are showing you are representing to them okay so titles are very very important thing a very very important component as well which should be added into your plot okay now I'm going to add some colors into my um, the scatter plot. Till now, that the only color it used which was blue for each and every company. Now adding this color will be like it will going to give uh, different colors for different companies. As it is interactive, you can um, select and deselect each of them. Okay, and you can see that it is showing the information all about the company just pouring down the uh, your graph okay and uh, now i'm going to add the symbols into my this plot yeah that color is also symbolizing the same thing the symbol will be going to do like they actually showing that they represent the different the unique identity okay so you, as you can see that the, it created a uh, random symbols to my each of my company okay so as you can see that i have selected some of the portion for my chart and there's option for downloading it into png zoom in zoom out then pan to like to move around your graph then the box to select that particular point 
and to compare with other point if all the points will be faded out and then there is like zoom in zoom out then there is option for auto scales lots of options are available there with this plotly that's the amazing that's too much and uh, i'm going to add now some more things into my plot now it's better to add some titles over my each and every data points okay so instead of using the colors a symbol you can also add the text over your data points okay this adding some colors is like visually appealing okay and the symbols too play the same role but adding text will be like yes that that points is for that company okay it gives the instant information about that data point now as you can see that the text which i've added is it's just over my data points and it doesn't look attractive so what i'm going to do i'm just going to change the position for my text for it you need to update the traces and here there is uh, there will be many options with there as you can see here so among them i'm going to use one of them and put down there and see the result okay so i think this top right will be best to add to change the location for my text other than it there are many options like top left bottom right bottom left and so on there, there's a permutation around between four directions okay so i'm going to add this top right here and you can see that the text position is now changed to the top right okay and this looks better than the previous one isn't it so this is all about that how you can add text into your graph and change the position of your text and so on things even you can change the font style as well the size of your font all of the options you can change here okay this is the power of using this plotly chart and uh, one more thing i think i should do here is to update the x-axis okay so to represent the data from 1 to 100 or you can say 0 to 100 so it will look a little bit uh, not looking like a misleading charts you know there is some charge is a misleading one which will going to uh, convey their audience in their way okay so avoid to create the misleading charts and here i have updated the x-axis 0 to 100 and there is will be a step of 10 like 0 10 20 30 and so on so this is how you can update the x-axis even i'm going to change the axis for, for my y as well and you need to just add the y instead of x and you know that the values were between minus 10 and 10 that's why i just given the range between minus 10 and 10 and here i'm going to give a step of 2 okay so like it will be like 0 2 4 in upward direction 0 minus 2 minus 4 in the downward direction so here you can update all on x and y axis you can also update the text positions you can update the text font style hey guys welcome back here in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can create the scatter chart and the dot chart with the help of that symbols now in this part you will going to learn that how you can create the bubble chart bubble chart is an extension to scattered chart earlier in scattered chart we have to make a relationship between two numerical values but with the help of bubble chart you can also put the third val variable as well okay and here the third variable will be our volume that will going to define the size of bubble okay earlier that was only the dot points were scattered all around the graph but this time with the help of the bubble chart we can able to add one more dimension to our data set to our chart which is our volume and with the help of volume we, we will going to plot a chart with different size of bubbles okay let me show you that how it will going to work so first of all this is my data frame and I'm going to create the random data set again and this is the yeah this is for to create a simple scatter chart and here I'm going to remove this symbol portion and instead of writing symbols I'm going to mention the size the size is the 
size of our bubble okay now here you need to put the volume here okay some typographical mistake were there okay now I've correct the spelling of volume and now I'm going to put volume here okay so let me show you that how our bubble chart will look like so you can see now there is a bubble chart is around my graph with the different size let me read on this cell the random data set okay and again I need to re revise these cells again to initiate the data frame and yes instead of rerunning that particular cells the size was not too much uh, unchanged okay so it's better to increase the range okay previously it was 5000 to 10000 so we are unable to see the uh, difference between the different sizes of the bubbles okay and this time i think that there yeah you can see that that now the size of the bubbles are having a difference some are very small and some are a little bit bigger than the smaller one so this is how you can plot the bubble chart and it is the difference between the scatter chart and the dot chart okay so for now keep learning and keep exploring hey friend welcome back here in this lesson we're going to talk all about pie chart pie chart is one of the most popular chart which is best to use when we are trying to work out with composition with something like here we're going to use different sectors of the stock market like financials healthcare it etc and then we're going to find out the weightage of the sector in terms of their occurrence. I mean, Auto 26 company, 3 is for healthcare, 4 is for IT, 5 for finance, and so on. And at last, we're going to create our pie chart to visualize that composition. As always, we're going to create our own data set. So let's create them. As they will be 26 company in our indices, let's name them in the alphabetical order okay now we're going to use the random choice function to associate our company with the random sectors and the first thing which we can do is to add all the sectors into this data frame and then convert it into the list okay so once you have the list with all the sector name then we can easily associate our company with different sectors so now just write down np dot random choice and here you need to put the data frame which is df1 which i have created for the sectors just write down df1 sectors to list which means that we are converting our data frame column into the list and then you need to uh, specify the size which is the length of our data frame the original data frame so now we have created a data frame with two columns one column determines the name of our stock and other column determines the sector name okay and whenever you're going to run this cell it will going to generate that random thing okay now i'm going to use this collection method which will going to count that how many times that particular sector occurred in that whole data frame okay it is very easy to use this collection method so that you don't need to put all this for loop or while loop to count each of them it saves a lot of time that's why i use this collection method now you will get the counter object you need to convert that counter object to the dictionary and then i'm going to convert this dictionary into the data frame okay once we have the new data frame we can easily create our pie chart to visualize our composition okay and here as dictionary have a key and the value format we're going to define the key as sector and the value as the occurrence for the column of our new data frame which is new df and column so this is how it works that we have the sectors and we have the occurrence of particular sectors okay now i'm going to use the plotly express library to create our pie chart and just write down pie equal to px dot pie and you need to mention your data frame 
your value and the name and here value is the occurrence the numeric value and the name will be the sector okay so here i'm going to find out the composition of our indices and in, on the basis of the different sectors okay now let title it as a sector wise composition okay now i'm going to show this figure just write down pi dot show and it will going to generate our pie chart okay there will it will be values not value here and same for name okay you need to add the s at the last so this is the pie chart how it looks like it denotes that the percentage of particular sector and here each slice represents the different sectors now i'm going to create a new pie chart in the terms of the stocks for it i'm going to create a new column for my data frame it which is weightage and here i'm going to give the equal weightage to each of the stocks and now i'm going to remove this sector factor and now we are totally focusing on the stocks name and the their weightage which is 3.84 approx because when you're going to divide this 100 divided by 26 it will going to give 3.84 something and once you're going to add all of that figure it will going to generate 99.99 something because all the values is in the float value okay now we have the numeric value the weightage and we have our stocks and now we're going to create a new pie chart and here i'm going to just do some of the changes like we're going to change the data frame name and the value which, which is now weightage and the name is the stock okay i'm also going to change the name of, of my title as well because it is now stock was composition so this is how this a new pie chart look like and one thing you must see here and you maybe observe it as well like if you're going to add more and more slices into your pie chart it will not going to look uh, attractive one and the end user will be getting confused at what kind of data you are showing to him or her so it's very very important thing you must know that if you want to show that your data in the form of the pie chart try to limit the number of slices max to max seven slices will be okay okay if you're going to add some more slices then it will be a little bit uh, untidy or you can say uh, unattractive okay so this is a key note which i want to convey you and this is all about pie chart and in the next part we're going to discuss donut and the sunburst chart till now keep learning and keep exploring hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i have discussed all about pie chart here in this lesson you are going to learn about donut chart let me revise some of the point which i discussed in my previous section a uh, pie chart basically it is a circular graph which represents the individual categories in the form of the slices whereas in this donut chart which is a variant of the pie chart but it has a hole in its center and it will going to display the categories in the form of arc rather than the slices and if you get some of the spaces between center then you can add some more information into your donut chart so this is one of the advantage of donut chart over the pie chart and as i say that the, the only difference is the hole so you need to add the whole attribute and give any value ranges from 0 to 1 okay i think 0.6 look better than 0.3 now i'm going to create another donut chart for my stock wise composition so just paste it here and again i'm going to add that whole attribute into this so this is how this pie chart and donut chart can be easily created with the help of plotly just adding the whole attribute okay and the best part is that as i'm using the plotly chart then you can easily interact with your chart okay you can uh, you can opt the options which you want to have like you can choose the different sectors in your compositions okay so this is how this plotly have a action so let me compare with like healthcare with different sectors like healthcare with finances that it is about 80 20 percent okay so this is how this donor chart looks like and 
we will be going to discuss the sunburst chart in the next lesson hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i have told you that how you can create pie chart donut chart now in this part i'm going to discuss that how you can create the sunburst chart so what is sunburst chart you can also name it as a ring chart or you can say multi-level pie charts or radial tree map okay because these type of chart used in to visualize the hierarchical data structure like uh, a sunburst chart will going to consist an inner circle and it is surrounded by rings of deep hierarchy level and then the angle is distributed accordingly the percentage for that particular parent node okay so here i'm going to create the sunburst chart and as here i'm defining the path okay you need to define the path like from parent to the child okay and here for me in our data set the parent is the sector and then the next child will be my stock names okay and here it will going to distribute the angle with the help of the values given in the weightage okay so this is how you can easily create the sunburst chart now let me show you that how it will look like here i'm just going to create a level 2 sunburst chart you can also increase the levels as you you're going to define the path accordingly okay and here is only one parent is there and one child is there that's why it comes under the level 2 category so this is how the sunburst chart will look like in the inner circle there is a weightage for the parent node which is the categories for our stocks like some financial is there the materials then it and so on and once you are going to tap one of them one of the inner slice it will going to open that outer one okay as you can see for this consumer here there are th uh, three stocks out there okay now once again tap it again and this is for materials j h x v and l comes under into it okay so it have a greater percentage as compared to that one then there is real estate there are only two stocks related to that real estate so this is how you can represent your hierarchical data with the help of sunburst chart if you're not going to put the hierarchical data it will just look like a simple donut chart okay so this is the major difference between the pie chart the donut chart and the sunburst chart hope you have understand the difference between and create accordingly for now keep learning keep exploring hey friend welcome back here in this lesson you will going to learn that how you can create the bar chart first and first we are going to import the panda library as it makes importing and analyzing of the data much easier then with the help of read excel function as my data is in the form of excel file so i'm using this read excel function to read my data set if you have any other kind of data set you need to use that particular function like for csv you need to use read csv function now let me show you that how our data set will look like the name of our data set is ownership.xls okay now as you can see here that there are four columns are there one is year and then three different categories of the ownership promoters fidi and the public this fidi simply means foreign institutional investors and di simply means domestic institutional investors okay and it is very important to know the change in the percentage over the time in the different categories while doing the fundamental analysis of any stock or any company as with time if there is change in the ownership continuously the frequency is the high that simply means that something is wrong with that company or anything else okay so this is very important factor you must know while doing any kind of fundamental analysis okay now let us focus on the creating the path chart as you can see that i simply import this plotly.express um, after creating our data frame because i'm not that type of guy which put all the libraries and the packages in the very very beginning and don't know when to use what 
okay so I simply import my packages anywhere anytime okay so let's leave this now you must know that at x-axis you want to put which variable and on y-axis which variable you're going to put okay as it is a bar chart there will be some rectangular bars will be there and by default when you're going to create the bar chart it will be in um, vertical form okay so this is the bar chart how it looks like like on the y-axis the value for promoter percentage is there and on the x-axis the time is there the year is there okay now we have the three different categories i'm going to add those also but later on first of all i'm going to add the title into my bar chart as it is very important to add this title so that your end user your audience will able to understand that what kind of data is represented with the help of the chart okay so i'm just simply going to write like shareholding pattern for the promoters now let me run this cell you can see that the title is now showing just above our bar chart okay now i'm going to um, change the colors of the bar okay so with time it will going to change the color so let me change the variable name and add one attribute which is color and here i'm going to put the ear okay so on the basis of the ear the different ear it will going to change the color of the bars so let us run the cell this is the cell okay so this is how it works it's showing the different color form for different ear okay the latest one is in yellow color and the oldest one is in blue color and then there's some color maps there and accordingly it is changing the color of the bars so this is all about the bar chart the basic bar chart in the next lesson i'm going to describe some more advanced features of the bar chart and the different type what's up guys welcome back here in this lesson i'm going to tell you that how you can put um the multiple variables into your bar chart in my previous lesson i have just created the basic bar chart with only one variable like uh, I've just used the promoters percentage now in this um, lesson we're going to learn that how you can add the multiple variables as there were three different categories which comes under ownership like promoters public then FIDIs so for it I'm going to create the list for it okay like let me add that categories so it's better to use this df dot columns and now i'm going to copy all that different categories and paste it here so this is uh, my different categories of ownership now instead of just promoters i'm gonna use this y list now let me run this so it's now showing the three different categories okay in the stack format okay let me um remove this color attribute so it will going to give the color according to that ownership one okay so as you can see that for blue it is showing for promoters for red it is showing for fidis and for green which is for public as it is plotly chart it is very very interactive you can choose what the option you want to show okay like for fidi you, you can see that it is in the decreasing manner and for promoters it is in increasing manner okay so this is how this plotly interactive chart looks like and uh, this is the chart in the form of the stacked format okay and you can also use the grouped one also so let me use the bar mode to create the group chart the group bar chart okay and there are basically three popular um types of bar mode one is stacked one which i already shown you and then this is group one and the last one is relative okay as you can see in this group bar chart the very first bar doesn't have the green bar because at the very beginning that value for public chart was zero 
okay and with time then there is change in the percentage of the ownership in different categories okay this is all about and uh, the group bar chart look like and the stacked bar chart look like and in the next lesson we're going to learn some more different types of bar chart like this till now the the bars which i have shown you are in the form of in the vertical format and next i'm going to show you that that will be in the form of the horizontal okay and then we're going to add some more features later on so for till now keep learning and keep exploring and keep visualizing hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i have told you that how you can create the bar charts the very simple bar charts which by default their orientation is in the vertical direction here i'm going to change the orientation to the horizontal to create the horizontal bar charts and uh, so what's the difference between horizontal and the vertical bar chart is earlier in vertical chart we put the numerical values into y-axis this time when we're going to create the horizontal bar chart you need to put the numerical values in the x-axis and the category value into y-axis it will be like vice versa okay and the uh, length of each bar will be like from left to right earlier in the vertical bar chart the length of bar chart was like from bottom to upward okay so this is the difference between vertical and horizontal bar chart here i'm going to just put this attribute orientation and put edge here which means the horizontal okay and it will turn your vertical graph into the horizontal one yes this type of chart occurs just because we didn't change the value like year should be there into our y-axis whereas the category value should be in our x-axis okay so no no and the category value will be into our y-axis okay so this is how our bar chart looks like okay and with the help of horizontal bar chart you can uh, add the full length labels easily because when you are having a lot of space like in, like y axis have a lot of space there you can put whatever you want to okay now i'm going to change the bar mode because the chart which i turn into is not looking too much attractive it's better to change the bar mode and let's check it out that how it will look like it depends that what kind of data sets you have accordingly put that kind of things and create them using plotly so here i have changed the bar mode to the stack and i think that stacked horizontal bar chart are looking better than the previous one isn't it so this is how you can easily create the horizontal bar chart and you can also change the bar mode as well as and lots of other things which you can do with vertical bar chart all the things will be same but you need to change the x and y variables and the orientation as well okay and there's nothing to be changed so so for now keep learning keep exploring and keep data visualizing